In the far reaches of the Andromeda galaxy, a species known as the Jinthar reigned supreme. A race of towering insectoid warriors, the Jinthar were the embodiment of terror. Their six-legged frames moved with an eerie grace, their chitinous exoskeletons shimmered with an oily sheen, and their multifaceted eyes glowed with an unsettling intelligence. For centuries, they had dominated the galaxy, their empire expanding inexorably, their conquests leaving only desolation in their wake. Planets fell one by one to the Jinthar onslaught. They left no survivors, no witnesses to their atrocities, only ruins and the hollow echo of their triumph. The galaxy's other civilizations, disparate and divided, trembled before the Jinthar's might. Resistance was futile. Hope was a fleeting dream until the humans arrived. It began with a single ship, an anomaly detected on the fringes of Jinthar space. The vessel was small, almost insignificant, compared to the gargantuan warships of the Jinthar fleet. It was of a design unfamiliar to the Jinthar, sleek, angular, and bristling with unfamiliar technologies. The Jinthar commanders observed it with a mixture of curiosity and disdain. Surely this lone ship posed no threat to the mighty Jinthar Empire. Commander Thrixis, a veteran of countless campaigns, was tasked with the investigation. His ship, the Vengeance, a dreadnought of formidable power, intercepted the intruder. As the massive warship closed in on the tiny vessel, Thrixis transmitted a standard demand for identification and surrender. To his surprise, the response was immediate and defiant. The viewscreen flickered to life, revealing the face of an alien unlike any Thrixis had ever seen. The creature was bipedal, with a smooth, hairless face and eyes that gleamed with an intensity that was almost unsettling. It spoke in a strange, guttural language, but the Universal Translator quickly rendered the message. This is Captain Eleanor Ramirez of the Terran ship Endeavour. You are in violation of the sovereignty of the United Terran Federation, Identify yourselves or prepare to be fired upon. Thrixis chittered in amusement, the audacity of this tiny creature. Did it truly believe it could challenge the might of the Jinthar? Captain Ramirez, Thrixis responded, his mandibles clicking with derision. You are in Jinthar space. Surrender your vessel immediately, or you will be destroyed. The human's response was a thin-lipped smile. We shall see about that. Without warning, the Endeavour launched a volley of missiles. Thrixis barely had time to react before the dreadnought shields flared and buckled under the onslaught. Explosions rocked the vengeance, and Thrixis's amusement turned to rage. All batteries, return fire, he commanded. The vengeance unleashed a torrent of plasma bolts, but the Endeavour was astonishingly nimble. It weaved and dodged, evading the worst of the assault. Thrixis watched in frustration, as the human ship danced through his fleet's formation, delivering pinpoint strikes to critical systems. The battle raged on, but the endeavor was relentless. Its weapons, though less powerful individually, struck with a precision and ferocity that began to take its toll. Thrixis's ship was severely damaged, and his crew was in disarray. How could this be happening? How could a single ship, a single human, be causing such havoc? And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the attack ceased. The endeavor pulled back, leaving the vengeance crippled and reeling. Captain Ramirez's face reappeared on the viewscreen. Let this be a warning, she said, her voice cold and resolute. The United Terran Federation will not tolerate aggression. We come in peace, but we will defend ourselves with all necessary force. You are not invincible, remember that. With that, the viewscreen went dark, and the endeavor vanished into the void. Thrixis seethed with fury, but beneath his rage, a seed of fear had been planted. The Jinthar were the terror of the galaxy, undefeated and unchallenged, until now. The humans had arrived and nothing would ever be the same. News of the encounter spread like wildfire through the Jinthar Empire. At first, many dismissed it as an anomaly, a fluke. But as more human ships appeared, each more formidable than the last, the truth became undeniable. The United Terran Federation was a force to be reckoned with. Human technology was advanced, their tactics innovative, and their resolve unbreakable. They did not seek to conquer, 
but neither would they be conquered. Their presence galvanized the other races of the galaxy, inspiring resistance and unity where before there had been only fear and division. For the first time in centuries, the Jinthar faced a true challenge. They were no longer the unchallenged masters of the galaxy. The impact of Captain Elena Ramirez's confrontation with the Jinthar was felt far beyond the immediate vicinity of the battle. News of the encounter spread through the galaxy at the speed of light, carried by whispers, transmissions, and the desperate hopes of those who had long been oppressed. The legend of the humans, these strange, fearless newcomers, began to take root. On the distant planet of Talvorath, in the capital city of Serac, the High Council of the Frulians convened in emergency session. The Frulians, a race of telepathic amphibians, had suffered under the Jinthar yoke for generations. Their once vibrant civilization had been reduced to little more than a shadow of its former glory. Chancellor Vryn, his emerald skin glistening under the council chamber's bioluminescent lights, addressed the assembly. His voice, rich and resonant, filled the room. Esteemed councillors, we have received reports of an extraordinary event. A Terran ship, under the command of Captain Elena Ramirez, has engaged and severely damaged a Jinthar dreadnought. This act of defiance is unprecedented and offers a glimmer of hope for our oppressed people. The council buzzed with astonishment and skepticism. Councillor Lear, a staunch realist with silver streaks running through her azure scales, voiced the concerns of many. Chancellor, how can we be certain of these reports? The Jinthar have crushed every resistance. Could this not be a desperate fabrication? Vryn nodded, acknowledging the validity of her concerns. I understand your skepticism, Councillor Lear, but the transmissions are genuine. We have corroborated them with independent sources. The humans are real and they have challenged the Jinthar. A murmur of hope and excitement rippled through the chamber. The Frulians, like many other races, had lived in fear of the Jinthar for so long that the idea of defiance seemed almost alien. Councillor Raoul, a young and passionate advocate for freedom, rose to speak. If the humans can stand against the Jinthar, then perhaps it is time for us to rekindle our own resistance. We cannot rely solely on these newcomers. We must prepare to fight for our own liberation. The assembly grew quiet, the weight of his words settling over them. Chancellor Vryn considered the councillor's proposal carefully. The Frulians had always been a peaceful race, their telepathic abilities more suited to diplomacy than warfare, but desperate times called for desperate measures. Councillor Raoul speaks truth, Vryn finally said. We must find the courage to stand alongside the humans. Our liberation will not be handed to us. We must seize it. Let us begin preparations to contact the United Terran Federation. If we can form an alliance, we may have a chance to reclaim our freedom. On the bridge of the Endeavour, Captain Elena Ramirez reviewed the latest intelligence reports. The encounter with the Jinthar Dreadnought had been a calculated risk, one that had paid off in unexpected ways. The destruction of the Vengeance had sent shockwaves through the Jinthar Empire and sparked hope among the galaxy's subjugated species. Captain, we're receiving a transmission from the United Terran Federation Command, Lieutenant Davis reported. Patch it through, Ramirez ordered. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing Admiral Thomas Kendrick, a stern-faced man with a greying beard and piercing blue eyes. Captain Ramirez, your actions have not gone unnoticed. Your engagement with the Jinthar has inspired resistance across the galaxy. We are receiving messages from numerous races seeking an alliance. Ramirez allowed herself a rare smile. Thank you, Admiral. It's good to know we're making a difference. What's our next move? Kendrick's expression softened slightly. We need to consolidate our position. The Frulians have requested a meeting to discuss an alliance. You are to proceed to Talvorath and open diplomatic channels. If we can unite the oppressed races, we stand a better chance against the Jinthar. Understood, Admiral. We'll set course for Talvorath immediately. As the transmission ended, Ramirez turned to her crew. You heard the Admiral. Set course for Talvorath. This is just the beginning. The Jinthar have ruled through fear for too long. It's time to show the galaxy that there is another way. The Endeavour surged into faster-than-light travel, its destination clear. The humans had arrived, and with them, the promise of a new dawn. On Talvorath, 
preparations for the arrival of the human delegation were underway. The Frulian capital, Serac, had been a place of subdued hope for years. Now it buzzed with a new energy. Citizens gathered in the streets, exchanging excited whispers about the humans and their fearless captain. Chancellor Vryn stood on the grand balcony of the council hall, overlooking the city. His aide, Jara, approached him quietly. Chancellor, the people are anxious but hopeful. The humans represent a chance we never thought possible. Vryn nodded, his gaze distant. Yes, Jara, but hope is a fragile thing. We must be careful not to place all our dreams on the shoulders of these newcomers. We must be ready to fight alongside them, not simply rely on their strength. As the endeavor emerged from hyperspace and descended toward the planet, a sense of anticipation gripped the galaxy. The Jinthar had been the terror of the stars, their dominance unchallenged until now. The humans had arrived, and their presence was the catalyst for a burgeoning revolution. The Jinthar, once feared as the ultimate power, now faced a threat unlike any they had ever encountered. The galaxy was on the brink of change, and the humans stood at the forefront of this new era, ready to defy the terror that had reigned for so long. The endeavor touched down gently on the landing pad in Serac, the Frulian capital. The city was a breathtaking sight, its architecture blending seamlessly with the natural landscape. Towering spires of coral-like structures rose from the ground, shimmering with bioluminescent light in the twilight. The streets below were filled with Frulians, their bodies glistening with vibrant colors that reflected their emotions, an awe-inspiring spectacle of hope and anticipation. Captain Eleanor Ramirez and her delegation disembarked, met by Chancellor Vryn and his council. Vryn's imposing presence was softened by the serene wisdom in his eyes. He stepped forward, his movements fluid and graceful, and extended a webbed hand in greeting. Captain Ramirez, welcome to Talvorath, he said, his voice echoing with a gentle telepathic undertone that conveyed warmth and respect. Thank you, Chancellor Vryn, Ramirez replied, shaking his hand firmly. It's an honor to be here. We've heard much about the resilience of the Frulian people. Vryn smiled, a rare expression for a leader who had endured so much hardship. We are a resilient race, Captain, but it is your actions that have given us hope. Come, let us discuss our mutual interests. The delegation moved into the Grand Council Chamber, an expansive room filled with intricate carvings and softly glowing murals that told the story of the Frulian civilization. They seated themselves around a large oval table. As they did, a hush fell over the room, the weight of the moment pressing down on everyone present. Chancellor Vryn began. Captain Ramirez, the Frulians have long sought freedom from Jinthar oppression. Your recent actions against the Jinthar have inspired us to rekindle our resistance. However, we lack the military strength to confront them directly. We seek an alliance with the United Terran Federation. Together, we can stand against the Jinthar. Ramirez nodded thoughtfully. We've seen the devastation the Jinthar have wrought. Our goal is to bring peace and stability to the galaxy. But we understand that this will require significant effort and sacrifice. What can you offer in return for our support? Councillor Raoul, the young and passionate advocate, leaned forward. The Frulians may lack military might, but we possess other strengths. Our telepathic abilities can be a powerful tool for intelligence gathering and coordination. Moreover, our planet's resources could be invaluable in supporting a sustained campaign against the Jinthar. Ramirez considered this. The Terran Federation had many strengths, but the Frulians' unique abilities and resources could indeed tip the scales. We will need to establish a strategic command to integrate our efforts effectively. Our engineers can assist in upgrading your defensive systems and we can provide training for your resistance fighters. Chancellor Vryn exchanged a look with his counselors, who nodded in agreement. We are prepared to commit to this alliance, Captain. The time for passive resistance has passed. We must fight for our freedom. As the talks progressed, a message was transmitted from the Terran Federation to other oppressed civilizations across the galaxy, calling for a Grand Council on Talvorath. Representatives from dozens of races responded, their leaders arriving on the planet with hope and cautious optimism. The Grand Council would be a historic gathering, the first of its kind since the rise of the Jintha. 
One such delegation was the Zaikara, a race of reptilian warriors known for their fierce independence. Their leader, General Crax, a formidable figure with scales like polished obsidian, was among the first to arrive. Captain Ramirez, Crax rumbled in greeting, his voice a deep growl. The Zikara have fought the Jinthar for centuries. We welcome this alliance and the chance to finally turn the tide. Ramirez extended her hand. General Crax, it's an honor. Together, we can build a coalition strong enough to challenge the Jinthar's tyranny. The Grand Council adjourned, but the work had only just begun. Representatives from each allied race convened in smaller strategy sessions, discussing tactics, resource allocations, and the coordination necessary to stand against the Jinthar juggernaut. The sense of unity was palpable, and for many it was the first time they had felt such solidarity. Captain Elena Ramirez stood at the centre of the bustling command hub set up within Serac's central spire. Screens and holographic displays filled the room, showing real-time data from across the galaxy. Engineers and tacticians worked side by side, bridging linguistic and cultural divides in their shared goal. Captain, we've received word from our outpost on Epsilon 5, Lieutenant Davis reported, his fingers dancing across a console. The Jinthar are mobilizing their fleets. We estimate they'll be ready to strike within the week. Ramirez nodded her face set in determination. Inform all Allied forces. We need to be ready to intercept. Any word from our recon teams? Lieutenant Davis tapped a few more keys, bringing up another display. Our recon teams have identified several key Jinthar supply lines and communication hubs. Disrupting these will buy us valuable time and weaken their initial assault. Good, Ramirez said. Let's prioritize those targets. We need to hit them hard and fast. As preparations continued, Chancellor Vrin approached Ramirez. His presence was a calming influence amidst the frenetic activity. Captain, our people are ready. We've never been warriors, but we are determined. Your leadership has given us hope. Ramirez smiled, a rare expression these days. Thank you, Chancellor. This alliance wouldn't be possible without your courage. Together, we have a real chance. In the days that followed, the Alliance forces moved with precision and determination. The Frulians used their telepathic abilities to coordinate complex maneuvers, while the Zykara provided brute strength and tactical expertise. Human engineers worked tirelessly to upgrade defenses and retrofit ships with advanced weaponry. General Crax led a squadron of Zykara fighters in a daring raid on a Jinthar supply convoy. The mission was a resounding success, crippling the Jinthar's ability to resupply their frontline troops and causing a ripple of disruption through their ranks. Meanwhile, a team of Frulian telepaths, led by Councillor Raal, infiltrated a key Jinthar communication hub. Using their abilities to mask their presence, they planted a virus in the Jinthar network, causing chaos and confusion among their commanders. Each successful operation bolstered the Alliance's confidence and weakened the Jinthar's grip on the galaxy. But the Jinthar were not a foe to be underestimated. Supreme Commander Zarthox's rage grew with each setback, his determination to crush the uprising intensifying. On the eve of the anticipated Jinthar assault, the Allied forces gathered for a final briefing. Holographic maps projected the likely paths of the Jinthar fleets, and key positions were highlighted for defense and counterattack. Tonight, we stand on the brink of history, Ramirez addressed the assembled leaders and soldiers. The Jinthar believe they are invincible, but together we've proven that they can be challenged. Tomorrow, we take the fight to them. General Crack stepped forward, his presence a formidable one. The Zykara will hold the line. We will show the Jinthar that they cannot break our spirit. Councillor Raal nodded, his eyes reflecting steely determination and we will use every means at our disposal to disrupt and disable their forces. The Frulians stand with you. The room erupted in a chorus of agreement, the unity among the diverse races stronger than ever. They were ready. The next day, the Allied forces were positioned and prepared. The Jinthar fleets emerged from hyperspace, their massive warships casting ominous shadows over the battlefield. The sight was intimidating, but the Allied forces stood firm, their resolve unshaken. 
The battle began with a ferocity that shook the very fabric of space. Jinthar dreadnoughts unleashed torrents of plasma, met by precise counterattacks from human and Zykara ships. Frulian telepaths coordinated fleet movements with uncanny precision, outmaneuvering the larger Jinthar vessels. Captain Ramirez's voice was calm and steady over the comms. Focus fire on their lead ships. We need to break their formation. Explosions rocked the battlefield as the Alliance forces struck with relentless determination. The Endeavour led the charge, its advanced weaponry cutting through Jinthar defences. But the Jinthar fought back with equal ferocity, their sheer numbers threatening to overwhelm the Allied lines. Captain, we're taking heavy fire on our starboard side, Lieutenant Davis called out. Redirect power to shields and bring us about, Ramirez ordered. We can't let them flank us. Amidst the chaos, General Crax's squadron broke through the Jinthar lines, targeting their command ship. The Zikara's fierce assault crippled the vessel, causing disarray among the Jinthar fleet. In the depths of the command ship, Supreme Commander Zarthox hissed in fury. Deploy the reinforcements! Crush them! But as the reinforcements arrived, they found themselves ambushed by a second wave of Alliance ships. The Frulians' intelligence had paid off, allowing the Alliance to predict and counter the Jinthar's moves. The tide of battle began to turn. One by one, Jinthar ships were disabled or destroyed, their formidable presence diminishing. The Alliance pressed their advantage, refusing to relent. Hours later, the battlefield was a scene of wreckage and ruin, but amidst the debris, the Allied forces stood victorious. Cheers erupted over the comms as the last Jinthar ship was driven back into hyperspace. Captain Ramirez looked out at the remnants of the battle, her heart swelling with pride. We did it, she said, her voice filled with awe. We actually did it. Chancellor Vryn's voice came over the comms, filled with emotion. This is a victory for all who have suffered under the Jinthar's tyranny. The galaxy is forever changed. General Crax, bloodied but unbowed, grinned fiercely. Today, we showed the Jinthar that we are not to be trifled with. Councillor Rao, exhausted but triumphant, added, And this is only the beginning. We will continue to fight until all are free. As the Allied forces regrouped and tended to their wounded, the realization set in. The humans had arrived, and with them a new era of hope and defiance. The Jinthar's reign of terror was not yet over, but for the first time in centuries, the galaxy stood united in the fight for freedom.